I had a viewer reach out to me about an electrical question recently, and their issue is, is they have an outlet that is controlled by a switch, so if the switch is on, the outlet is powered. If the switch is off, then there's no power to the outlet. And what they want to do is they want to disconnect the switch, get the switch out of the circuit altogether, and just have the outlet hot all the time. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to show some different configurations about how switches are used to control outlets. So instead of just making a video on how to disconnect it, I thought I'd show some different configurations to help you understand how some of these circuits work. And I just want to start out by saying that if any of this doesn't make sense, maybe go back and watch my electrical basics video and then come back and watch this video and hopefully it'll help tie everything together. So this is my makeshift panel box. So it's a panel box with breakers in the middle and then it has the two bus bars on the side. This is what you're gonna see in your house for your service entry panel. So just to review, a typical outlet circuit is gonna look just like this. Uh, of course, I'm using a 14-2 wire. Usually, I recommend using a 12-2 wire for this type of circuit, but since we're gonna be dealing with lights, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the 14-2. There's really nothing wrong with using the 14-2 wire for it either. I just like using the 12-2. By my own convention, I'm gonna be drawing the white wire with blue because I can't draw white on white. So let's go ahead and connect up our wires. So we're gonna have the ground wire come over to the bus bar. We're gonna have the neutral wire come over to the bus bar. And it doesn't matter which bus bar they go to in your home. And the black wire is going to go to the breaker. Obviously this outlet would be in a box, I'm just not drawing the box. So we're gonna connect our ground screw to the bare copper wire. The neutral wire is going to attach to the silver screw and the black wire is going to attach to the gold screw. So this is the simple outlet circuit in your home. But what if we don't want that outlet on all the time? How do we make it so this outlet it will only be hot, say to run a lamp or something like that. We walk in to the room, we have a lamp plugged in and we flip a switch and the lamp comes on. So how do we make that circuit work? So remember that a switch is only used to break the hot wire. So you'll have a black wire that comes in that'll be hot and then you'll have another black wire that is going up to your device. When the switch is off, the circuit's broken, and so there's no electrons flowing through the circuit. Flip the switch up, electrons flow from the hot over to your device, and then back to the neutral wire, back to your panel box. Now let's incorporate this switch to power this outlet only sometimes. So let's do this. Let's ignore this black wire, and instead of running the black wire over to the screw, let's run a black wire over to our switch. And we'll go ahead and we will connect up the ground wire to the ground screw on the switch. And then let's take a white wire and let's run it from the switch over to the gold screw on the outlet. So I set this up just to maybe help you understand it a little bit better, but essentially all I've done is take a piece of Romex and run it from the box of the outlet over to the box of the switch. And essentially this is how this is hooked up. So let's follow the path of the electricity. The breaker's on, the circuit's hot. Now, power is going through the black wire, but it doesn't reach the outlet. It bypasses the outlet, and keep in mind, like I said, there's a box here. So now it's gonna run from one box to the other, not gonna be connected to the outlet. It's gonna go to the next box to the switch. Now, if I turn the switch on, regardless of what the color of the coating looks like, it's still gonna conduct electricity. So now, power goes through the switch and back over to the gold screws. What's nice about this system is you can use one piece of Romex to go from the outlet box to the switch box and complete your circuit. What I've done here is add some black electrical tape to the white wire. What this is telling anybody that's working on this circuit is that this wire is hot. So it's no longer a white wire. We've added the black electrical tape showing that this is a hot wire. 
if you're tinkering around with the circuits in your house and you see this, this is what somebody's trying to tell you, whoever installed this, whoever did work before you, this wire is hot. Especially if you live in Pittsburgh where half the houses were built before the Declaration of Independence was signed. You see a lot of this kind of stuff where there isn't lights in the living room in different rooms. You have a switch that controls outlets that you'll plug lamps into, walk in the room, flip on the switch, and now your lamp works over in the corner. So to the viewer that asked me the question, how can I make the outlet hot all the time? What you can do is just connect the black hot wire up to, this, up to the outlet and then disconnect your Romex wire going to the switch. It's perfectly acceptable just to leave this wire for dead. You can just wire nut off the ends and push them in the back of the box, or you could push the wires out of the box into the wall just to get them out of the way. And as far as the switch, you can go ahead and take the switch out of the box. As long as there's no hot wire in the box, you can do the same thing. Leave the wire for dead. Whatever type of wall you have, you can just put a patch over it and now that part of the circuit's gone. So if you want to install a circuit like this to where the power is going to make it to the switch first and then it's going to power an outlet, then you will connect your ground wire to the bus bar, your neutral wire to the bus bar or a bus bar, either bus bar, and then your black wire is going to be attached to the breaker. You'll create a pigtail off from the grounding screw and connect your ground wires to it. Wire nut this together, use one of those Romex connectors. Then you will connect your neutral wires. And then you will connect your black wire up to the first screw. And you're going to connect the other black wire to the other gold screw. That's going to continue on to the outlet. And the outlet's gonna be hooked up just like an outlet. So now let's examine what we have here. We have the breaker that's providing the power. So the breaker is on, which means there's power flowing up to the switch here. Well, since the circuit's broken here, there's no power making it to the outlet. So regardless of what you have plugged in the outlet, it's not gonna work. And then you still have the full return path, but the circuit's broken. So now turn on the switch, and now you have a complete path where the outlet is hot. So now if you have this scenario in your home and you want this outlet to be hot all the time, this is going to be as simple as removing the switch in the box, and now you're just going to wire nut together the neutral wires, the ground wires, and the black wires. So I just drew a makeshift outlet box here, and this is very important. The way you deal with this is you either put a blank cover over where the switch was, or if you want, you could actually add another outlet there or something, but it is illegal to say just drywall over this or do something to cover this up. That splice or that repair has to be made in a junction box. And one of these covers is essentially what I'm talking about. You have your switch box that you disconnected. Now it's more of a junction box instead of a switch box. Now you just put the cover over it and it's just kind of a done deal. If you don't want that junction box there at all, then what you're gonna have to do is find another power source for your outlet. So that means tying off from another outlet or actually running a whole new Romex wire. And if you decide to do that, then once again, you can disconnect the wire here, have your wire come in from another source, and then this wire can be left for dead, and then this wire can be taken out of your panel box and it can be left for dead. Then, as long as there's no hot wire here, the wires are just in the wall dead, then you can go ahead and patch over this and close it up. So just kind of as a side note, I did install one of these circuits in my old garage and what I had plugged into the outlet was my air compressor and I had my air compressor in the next room over. So I had a switch to where I could just turn the switch on and it powered the air compressor in the next room and then when I didn't need the air compressor anymore, I just flipped the switch off. 
and just put it on a 20 amp circuit with a 20 amp switch, 20 amp outlet, and it worked really well for that purpose. As I said, a lot of homes here in Western Pennsylvania are super old, and you'll see a lot of these type of circuits here where they didn't bother running any lights in the ceiling or anything like that. It's just one of the outlets works off from the switch and you just use lamps. And I also wanted to use this video to point out a few safety rules. One of those being you can't make a junction behind the wall without it being accessible. So it has to be the, any type of a repair or any type of a junction has to be made in a junction box. And also the black electrical tape is very important. If somebody comes working behind you and you just have that white wire hooked up somewhere and you're not actually marking it as hot, you know, somebody, hopefully people would be, you know, be cognizant of that and turn off the power, make sure they check for voltage or anything when they're working. But just in case some other homeowner comes behind you or something, it's definitely good to put that electrical tape on there to let them know, hey, there's something different with this white wire. So I hope this video helped. And we're so grateful for everyone to support our channel. Thanks for watching.